The floor well, for live. Good morning and welcome to this week at uh, the Communist Party. Uh, we're here with uh, our co-host and producer, Scott. Scott, um, how's it going? Uh, it's going well, can't complain except for the weather. Um, how about you, Joe? Well, I was doing good this morning until I was looking at the news and I saw that there was a second suicide just this week amongst the uh, uh, Parkland uh, high school students. And, and that's a very sad thing. It's, it's, uh, it's just unimaginable, you know, that these teenagers uh, uh, have been so impacted by um, that tragedy that, that, you know, they see no hope. And it, it throws into to really sharp relief, I think. Um, you know, we talk about the Republican agenda as reactionary, as harmful to the working class and the people, but it's also just, it's cruel. And the, the, the degree of, of cruelty with which uh, opponents of, of gun law reform have, have treated these, these people, have dismissed them, mocked them as, you know, weak. Uh, it, it's just, it, it really shows that there is a, a core of just inhuman cruelty at the, the center of it's crazy. It's crazy, you know, and, and uh, you know, I support the Second Amendment. That's that's not the issue. But you don't need AK-47s and AR-15s and, all, you know, I mean, it's, it's just. And it's it, it's like peddling a false solution. Like people are told, you know, we live in this time of, of, of declining security. Jobs aren't secure. People massively lost their homes in 2008. Um, and the solution that is being peddled is, you need to arm yourself against your political opponents or against, you know, well, this, it's, it's this totally local. Yeah. I'll never forget about 10 years ago, my nephews were visiting me during the holiday and all they wanted to do was get back before New Year's Eve so that they could um, shoot off uh, AK-47s. These are kids with like 14, 15 years old. What in the hell were they doing with AK-47? I was trying to say. It's just, you know, it's just, you know, and they're killing each other, you know, mm -hmm. with it, black youth. Yeah. And it's just, this is insanity. This is madness. It is. And, and something has to be done um, about it. Uh, something will be done about it. And, and I just don't know what it's going to take. Um, and, I mean, the people are, are speaking pretty decisively. The, the movement is getting bigger and bigger and, and that, you know, reactionary fringe is, is getting more and more isolated on the, the gun issue, I think. I hope so. I hope so. We'll see. So this week, uh, the Mueller report came out. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday, was it? No, it was last yeah. Friday. Yeah. And at first, people... Total exoneration said, or something. Right, right. <laughs> and Trump had that big rally yesterday. Yeah. Did you watch it? I didn't. I saw a couple of clips from it and uh, noticed that he's really now uh, seized on Alexandria Ocasio Cortez as his like uh, his new target of, of uh, ridic ridicule and enmity, which I think is going to actually drive people toward her. So I think so, and to and to the left, uh, and uh, hopefully to more advanced positions. It kind of might have a boomerang effect, you know, where the more the right attacks decent-minded, uh, progressive, working-class folks, uh, you know, the more that they do that, the more people start looking at them and looking at the issues and what they stand for, yeah. saying, whoa, wait a minute, you know? And then oh, what is- It's this person, maybe they have something to say. What is up, uh, thinking, speaking about things to say and do, what about this attack on Obamacare that the Trump administration is, yeah, I, mean, it, I mean, even even a lot of Republicans uh, seem to think that that he's gone down a, a completely insane path. Like he wants to make, you know, the repeal of the ACA, the dismantling of the ACA, the, the like primary issue of the 2020 race. And that's mad. They don't have anything to replace it with. Uh, the courts just struck down his um, attempt at what are they called uh, associated health plans or whatever. Um, so there, there's there's nothing, uh, and the Republicans know that they're super vulnerable on this. And I just I'm just going to sit back and sort of watch it 
uh, self-destruct, hopefully. Uh, I mean, hopefully the, the courts show some sense and don't. Uh, it seems like a crazy, crazy strategy. Well, anyway, one of the big issues is um, uh, with respect to the Mueller report and, and everything is, you know, a lot of people uh, on the liberal left and in the democratic movement were hoping that Mueller would convince, provide convincing evidence that there was um, complicity, a conspiracy, and that that would serve as a basis for getting uh, Trump out of office. Uh, I think that was an overestimate of the role of the security forces and the FBI and the Justice Department and so on. And it was, know, it was it was wishful thinking. It, you know, nobody can't rely on them. You know. On the other hand, some people uh, were critical of of us because we argued that that process had to unfold, you know, and that Trump's attack on it were dangerous and, and that you had to uh, fight for the completion of that process because uh, even understanding all of the limitations that these were contradictions that were taking place within the ruling class. That's exactly the point, that the, but, uh, the ruling class is, is divided, it's fighting amongst itself, and that's important to realize. And, and that fight needs to be, as you said, taken to, to completion. And you can't take a neutral position on it, you know, when there's a fascist like danger that is emerging in the country, uh, these issues are um, the, the fight for democracy, even bourgeois democracy. And that's what we got. It's a bourgeois town, folks. Not that I'm telling you anything you don't know. Um, those rights are space to struggle. And without that, you know, we'd be up a creek without a paddle. Lenin was, was completely clear on that. Like um, bourgeois democracy provides more favorable conditions to struggle for socialism than, you know, a reactionary autocracy or dictatorship does. Now I wanted to, speaking of bourgeois democracy, I've always thought that there was a right and a left in political life, you know, ever since the time of the French Revolution, you know, uh, the conservatives and the feudal aristocracy sat on the right side of the chamber and the revolution, the revolution sat on the left. And since that time, uh, that has been a defining feature of political life, reaction on the right and democracy and revolution on the left. But I saw an article in the pre-convention discussion that said we shouldn't use the term right. What, what's, what's your well, thinking? But I think we have to be clear on the, the point that article made. It wasn't for the complete uh, elimination of the term right. I think what, what the piece argued was that we shouldn't just say right. We should uh, add something to it that makes clear the class nature of it. So the billionaire right, the, the corporate backed right, the anti-worker right, because and, and I, I think I, I agree with that position. Like right and left, they're convenient, they're like a shorthand, but they're also confusing. And one of the things that characterizes our moment right now is, is people are becoming, like class consciousness is growing. And part of our job is to help clarify that, grow it, um, and uh, qualifying what we mean by right. Um, that our enemies are not, you know, my next door neighbor with the Trump sign, but, you know, the people funding the Trump campaign. Like, well, of course, but isn't there a basis for right-wing politics in the uh, uh, poor and working class communities? I mean, my, my dad, you know, I've all said on this program, worked in a steel mill and, and uh, he used to listen to Rush Limbaugh all the time. Now, not that he was a right-wing guy, no, but he said that all of the people who worked in the mill with him were listening to Rush. 24, and he needed to hear that in order to be able to respond to it. Yeah. So it's not like, I agree with you on the issue of racism. We always say ruling, we, we say often we make the, we use the term ruling class racism, but we also use the term racism in general because yeah. it is a phenomenon in this society and you can't say you should stop using it. No, absolutely not. But we also have to understand and be clear about the, the dynamics and the, the origin of these movements. This is, uh, Toliati points it out in his, his work on fascism. The uh, 
fascism is organized by and, and, and represents the interests of a section of the ruling class, but it draws to itself a mass base, solidifies it by making you know, various kinds of, of concessions and things. Yes. And, Mainly um, amongst the upper echelons of the uh, uh, working class, but its mass base is amongst the petty bourgeoisie, the middle class, as we in, say. In, in the case of the and, yeah. uh, professionals and so on and uh, so, so forth. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an interesting conversation. My uh, feeling though is that, you know, we have a anti-right strategy um, and uh, it kind of uh, muddles to, to, to address that issue in the way is, you know, in, in a certain way kind of muddles that. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to keep focused because the right wing is the basis, has its basis certainly in the ruling class uh, and it is a clear and present danger to democracy. How else is the pre-convention discussion coming? You know, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, you know, there, there are a few pieces that um, are pending that we haven't managed to post yet, but uh, we're getting some um, replies to some of the stuff we've published and putting those up. Um, uh, what I really appreciate about it is that it's, um, a lot of the pieces are really short and focused. They're not long, you know, theoretical disquisitions. They're, they're, they draw on concrete. And I think that's a, that's a step forward. Um, Another but, issue that's come up in this discussion, speaking of uh, the uh, anti-right policy is, it's being counterposed to the anti-monopoly strategy. Have you noticed that? Uh, uh, yeah, there was a piece in, in, in that direction. Um, and uh, what, what are your thoughts? I think I remember a discussion with you at one point where you, um, you suggested that the two were uh, sort of interpenetrating or, or merging into one another somehow. Well, I think that there are, are moments um, in which uh, those issues converge. Um, and I think that, for example, when the banks collapsed uh, in 27, 2007, 2008, uh, that was such a moment. And the Occupy movement emerged. In fact, Obama got elected because of that. Um, and then you saw that the, uh, the uh, Occupy movement, which raised the issue of the 1% 99%. That slogan was a reflection oh, yeah. of the merging of those two moments. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but now, you know, in response to it, speaking of boomerangs, Trump emerged as a counterpoint to that moment, you know, and it shifted a, a section of the ruling class even further to the fascist tinged right, you see, and a mass, and, and, and that issue is still ongoing. But I think that the problem is a larger one. And I think that uh, that, that is uh, there, there, you know, that the, there's a lack of understanding, in, in my opinion, at least that the fight against reaction is a all class fight. And that the point of the Communist Party is to put a working class imprint on that struggle. Yeah. You know, that was the central thesis of Lenin's what is to be done, you know? Or was it, it was two tactics, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry, two tactics of social democracy and the democratic revolution, you're, you're right, you know? And the United Front kernel is, you know, very much in that uh, whole uh, a thesis. It, it, and it later was uh, emerged more fully formed as as time went on. If and we I'm oh, sorry. No, no. Uh, Go on. Um, no, yeah. If we look, if we look historically at at the way um, the capitalist class in this country has responded to crisis after the Great Depression, um, coming out of the depression, the working class was was strong, highly organized, communist leadership, uh, and capable of drawing the liberal democratic section of the ruling class toward itself, toward a new deal program. Um, counterpose that to the response to the crisis of the early 1970s, uh, when 
the the reactionary right um, segregationist uh, forces were gaining power. The response to that crisis um, drove uh, a section, the liberal democratic section of the ruling class uh, toward a right wing program that ended up in neoliberalism. So now we're, we're coming out of another crisis, that crisis of 2008, the working class is gaining strength and organization and experience and power. The, the right wing is also um, consolidating itself and becoming much more aggressive. So it's really a question of who's going to be strong and organized enough to draw the set, draw the liberal democratic section of the ruling class toward itself. If you don't fight for the independent role of the trade union movement, the independent role of the working class, if, if that doesn't happen, then the tendency of liberals will be to continue to pull to, to the right. That's always been the uh, case. Yeah. But you know, there's another side of this issue and that Marxists uh, and some of our comrades uh, fear that the um, anti-right strategy is a breeding ground for opportunism in the working class movement, you see? That's the central thesis. But opportunism has always been present. You know, it was present in the first international and it wasn't the uh, anti-right strategy was that that was the breeding ground for because it didn't exist at the time, you know? So um, I think that the sources of these problems uh, lie somewhere else. And, and, and not in in the, I'm sorry. Go on. Uh, no, no, I please, you were about to finish your thought. No, I was just saying that the sources of these problems lie in another place and, mm -hmm. and not so much in the uh, strategy itself. There are always dangers, you know what I mean? There are always mm -hmm. pressures uh, on our party uh, to take uh, positions that uh, move away from a consistent working class line. Mm -hmm. But the solution to that is to fight for the line and not to throw out the uh, the uh, baby in this particular case uh, with also, the uh, bathwater. There's a certain measure of, of idealism, I think, in this. The, the, the underlying idea that I, that I hear expressed a lot is that, you know, we're somehow, we're going to trick people if, if we're not constantly telling them that the whole capitalist class is their enemy and, you know, the Democrats aren't any better than the Republic. The Democrats are going to betray them. Like, people aren't, stu workers aren't stupid. Right, they don't isn't, have. isn't that, I hate to use names, you know, but isn't that kind of similar to the position that the Mensheviks took that Lenin was polemicizing against? Yeah, and, well, the, the, the way Lenin describes the Menshevik position was um, sit back and, uh, and I, this may actually have been their own words, like denounce every successive governing formation until power fell into their hands. So just... And, 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 and wasn't there the idea that the, the, the strategy would somehow uh, uh, corrupt the working class movement yeah. and give them illusions about the uh, bourgeoisie, the, mm -hmm. the rising capitalist and the Menshevik said, no, we have to stay pure. We have to, and the response to it was that, no, we're, we're not afraid to march hand in hand you know, in a temporary alliance, so long as we maintain that working class line and fight the, for its independence. The independent well, working class is not won rhetorically, it's won by participating in a movement and putting your stamp on that movement. Exactly. You got to be in it to win it. Well, I think that does it for today, Scott. Um, Good talking with you, Joe. We, we uh, will be back uh, next week. Uh, please visit our webpage at cpusa.org. Uh, join in the discussion. We, we want to hear from you. You can do it here on Facebook as, as well. Uh, this is uh, your opportunity to say what's on your mind and help us formulate better positions as we go forward, because we, like everybody else, make mistakes. Uh, hopefully, if we keep our eye on the working class, uh, we won't make the big ones. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So that's it. We're done here. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye, Joe. Bye, folks.